So last week's video, I did a video on the ultimate guide to living in Cleveland. I talked about the highways. I talked about suburbs. I talked about how up north is the lake and there is no neighborhoods or streets up there. And in today's video, we are talking everything Cleveland and the Cleveland neighborhoods. And this video is the ultimate guide to Cleveland. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel, Living in Cleveland. I'm Patty, Patty Self CLE. I make videos about all things Northeast Ohio, Northwest Ohio, and down South. If you don't wanna miss any of my videos, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button, leave me some comments, I love it. Okay, um, if you've been watching my channel, I am a realtor in the Cleveland area. Cleveland is my home. Obviously, my channel is called Living in Cleveland. And today, I'm just going to do an overview of the different neighborhoods within the city of Cleveland. So, up here is a map, probably covering my face right now. And I don't know where I found this map. But it's this map, particular map, it's green. They're talking about all the tree canopies and how much trees are covering the Cleveland area. But what a, this map is good because it... it um, it has all of the different neighborhoods in Cleveland. In fact, there's 20, 34 actual traditional neighborhoods in the city of Cleveland. Um, and I'm going to break them down, sort of. I'm gonna break them down into 17 um, general areas. So if, if I am wrong, obviously I know everybody likes to prove me wrong. Leave a comment, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. So. But there's also some things, you know, and, and a lot of my, I'm going to put this website, is, this is a great website, this is cleveland.com or this is cleveland.org, I'm not sure which one it is. Um, but they did a really nice job of breaking down the Cleveland neighborhoods into these 17 areas. So this is where I'm getting my information from. Um, and I'm going to add my own little two cents here and there. So let's start east to west. Okay, so you can see the map. These major areas, well, these are the, the 34 separate neighborhoods, which pretty much, and even within them, people in those neighborhoods are going to say, uh-uh, there's more to Ohio City than just Ohio City. So I'll get into all that. Um, and if I missed something, I apologize. Um, if you've watched my videos, you know I'm a West Sider. I know the West Side better than I know the East Side. Um... I do know the East Side, the suburbs, all that area, the East Side of Cleveland, when I first started teaching, I taught on the east side of Cleveland, so I sort of know that area, so I'm going to do my best, so bear with me. So I'm going to start from west to east, so I'm a west sider, west side is easier for me. So let's start with West Park. Now when you go on to the website, this is Cleveland, when they talk about West Park, they're really only talking about Cam's Corners, and West Park is really four separate neighborhoods and they're kind of just putting it all together. So what they're talking about West Park is they're talking about Cam's Corners, which is its own separate neighborhood. I grew up in Cam's Corners. It's a very small little pocket. It's three, well, okay, let me just be honest. I went to Catholic grade school. I grew up in the 70s when there was busing. And anybody who grew up with me in my neighborhood, we pretty much, we talked about everything is which parish are you from? So I consider uh, Cam's Corners to be Our Lady of Angels, where I went to grade school, uh, St. Mark's and St. Pat's. That's what I consider the Cam's Corners neighborhood. And you could probably argue differently, whatever. That's just what I consider. So Cam's Corners is really that area right on Rocky River Drive in Lorraine, that little intersection right there. And that is Cam's Corners. You have the Public House, which is a Irish, there's a lot of Irish bars. It's an Irish neighborhood. And that's the one thing that this, this is Cleveland, that website's talking about. It's like, everybody's Irish. Well, that's Cam's Corners and not so much anymore. It's just, it is a home to PJ McIntyre's, the public house, a bunch of different Irish areas. It just is, they hold a hoolie every spring where they have all the Irish, the bagpipers come, they have Irish dancing, all of that. So Cam's Corners, and you know what? Cam's Corners feels like a suburb. Beautiful homes. I mean, you can't get a house for, I mean, if you get a house for under $200,000, it needs work. Um, in fact, my best friend, Mary, we were looking at houses in Cam's Quarters because we both grew up there. And she's like, wouldn't it be fun to live back here in Cam's Quarters? 
And we looked at this house last year and we're like, God, we used to make fun of this street. Like, God, this isn't even a nice street. And the house was like 200 some, maybe it was two years ago. Cause it was right when things opened up during COVID. We were allowed to go out, but we had a mask. It's only one person at a time. And we're like looking at this house and we're like, okay, it's cute and everything. I mean, literally people were waiting outside trying to get into this house and sold in a weekend. And we were like, God, this wasn't even a nice street when we, when we grew up. So Cam's Corners is very highly sought after. If you can find a house in Cam's Corners and you want to live in Cleveland, jump on it. It's a safe neighborhood, walkable. You can walk to the store. There's a Marks there. You're right by Fairview Hospital, which is now a Cleveland clinic. That's where I was born. That's where all my kids were born. So that's Cam's Corners. And then it is also Hopkins because Rocky River Drive dumps you right down to Hopkins Airport. And that's a whole nother different area um, that is not, um, that's not Cam's Corners. Um, it is, there's a whole area there on Rocky River Drive. There is neighborhoods down there. It's not really considered Cam's Corners. It's its own little neighborhood. Then there's the Jefferson area, which is about, I, in my opinion, starts west 130th. I would say that Cam's Corners goes from 100, like like 150th, like 170th to 140th, I would consider Cam's Corners. And then anything east of West 140th going down the rain is that Jefferson area. St. Vincent de Paul is part of that area. Um, and that would take you down to about, I would say probably 117th, that gives it another area. Um, and then if you go a little bit further south, it's in between um, Hopkins and, and next to it is called the Bel Air Puritus area. Um, in fact, Puritus is another thriving area of West Park. You have smaller little homes close to the airport. In fact, um, before we moved to Cam's Corners, we lived on West 157th and Puritus. Not Cam's Corners. It's part of the Bel Air Puritus neighborhood. So West Park highly sought after. If you're looking to do any investing and you want to flip homes or you want to keep them and rent them out, I've done several videos on, you know, it's a little bit tougher to do in Cam's Corners because if you can find a property to rent out, I mean, obviously grab it. They're they're hard to come by. But that Jefferson area and that Bel Air Puritus area are prime spots, especially Jefferson. You can find a lot of properties, inexpensive. You can still get really high rents. It's a great area. Okay, so that's all of West Park. Um, and if you want to look for more things about, I, I encourage you to go on this website. It has a ton of information and each neighborhood, and, and there's going to be some neighborhoods I'm, I don't really have a lot to say about because I just don't know, but go on this website. Every one of these neighborhoods has a thriving community development center. So I highly recommend if you're interested in any of these neighborhoods, do some more research on your own. On your own. I'm just kind of giving an overview. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna go to the Detroit, the Detroit Shoreway area, which is again four separate neighborhoods when you go onto this map of these 34 different neighborhoods, because I'm only doing 17, which if you think about it, it's half. So let's talk about the we call it the D show. You know, every neighborhood's got its little nickname. So D show. And that's really, you think of the Detroit Shoreway, first thing that comes to a lot of people's mind, you go on that website, pretty much all they talk about is the West 65th Gordon Square neighborhood. I've done a couple videos on that, um, which is the hot spot. You got a Capitol Theater. I mean, talk about West 65th. You have so many new restaurants. You have Stone Mad, which is an Irish restaurant. Bar, beautiful. I mean, every stone came from Ireland. Absolutely gorgeous. You go inside this bar. It's this old fashioned like pub with these beautiful chandeliers. Absolutely gorgeous. And the outside patio, the fire out there, it's beautiful. Right across the street, the most amazing pizza, Il Rion. Um, right on Detroit, you have um, just all kinds of shops. The original is Fount Leather. I wish I had my purse up here. I don't. My Fount bag. It's like my pride and joy. And it's Cleveland leather. It's beautiful. There's a few, they've just opened up some other shops like in, in fancier, like Crocker Park. I think there's one on the east side. Um, Blue Habanero, Mod Mex restaurant. There's, oh my gosh, you name it. There's Happy Dog. There's just so many things. Brew Nuts. There's a little coffee shop, Gypsy Cafe. So 
West 65th, but that's only part of the Detroit Shoreway neighborhood. There's also the Edgewater neighborhood, and I've done a separate video on that as well, and that's by Edgewater Park, which is in Cleveland, and that whole area around there is beautiful homes, absolutely beautiful, right on the water, well, the beach is on the waterfront, but you can see the, the lake from a lot of these homes in that Edgewater area. Um, and then if you go a little bit further south, you have two other neighborhoods. You have the Cadell neighborhood and you have the West Boulevard neighborhood. So let's start with West Boulevard. West Boulevard is actually an exit off of I-90 that you have to take if you're going to go to the Detroit, to the West 65th Gordon Square area. You get off at West Boulevard and West Boulevard is this big, beautiful street. So if you're heading west, if you're, no, if you're heading east on 90, you get off at the West Boulevard. If you take a right, that's Lorraine and there's St. Ignatius Grade School. Beautiful church. It's where my cousins went to grade school. Um, and if you take a left, that's going to head north. And that's what's going to take you actually through the Cadell neighborhood. But this West Boulevard, there are these beautiful homes. At least a lot of them used to be. Some of them have kept its grandeur. A lot of them, unfortunately, need a lot of work. A lot of side-by-side -side duplexes, doubles, multifamilies, whatever you want to call them. Big, beautiful lots. Um, I've been in a few of them that have been for sale. And unfortunately, a lot of them are in major need of repair. And I think the further south you get, the better um, they're taken care of. This is just my opinion. Of course, you're going to see one. They're like, oh, my God, it's beautiful. And then the one next to it's ugh, not so much. So that's the West Boulevard area. And then you have the Cadell area. And probably the the anchor of the Cadell neighborhoods, the Cadell Rec Center. And it's a thriving rec center. Um, I used to own a tutoring company and Cadell was one of our partners. And we had a satellite center there where we tutored kids. We have we would walk kids over for, from some neighboring Cleveland schools. And um, we did a lot of work with Cadell. Um, just really, really involved in the community. So that's the... D show area, Detroit Shoreway, which is actually four separate Cleveland neighborhoods. Okay, and I'm not even going to talk about downtown because downtown's a whole nother beast. That's its own neighborhood. It's several neighborhoods. So downtown isn't even going to be included. So that's part, that's one of the 34 neighborhoods. I'm not even going to touch this video because this video is going to be long enough. Okay, next, let's talk about old Brooklyn. And as I'm talking about these neighborhoods, I'm going to go in depth to many of these neighborhoods. I'll do as many as I can. Um, in fact, just this past weekend, I was showing houses in Old Brooklyn. So you will be seeing an Old Brooklyn video. I've done an Old Brooklyn video in the past. Old Brooklyn is not only is, it's always been a good neighborhood. My grandparents, when they sold their house on the east side of Cleveland, they moved to Old Brooklyn. Uh, my grandfather was a municipal judge had to live in Cleveland, so um, lived right off Valley Road in the old Brooklyn area. Beautiful churches. Um, and now, gosh, since like Lakewood, Cam's Corners have gotten so expensive. You know, first time home buyers really just, you really, it's it's hard to find a house in the, in the Cam's Corner neighborhood. And old Brooklyn is kind of taking that spot. It's got a great community develop, uh, community development, de development corp, Jeez, oh man, I'm, it's late. Normally I film in the morning and it's like dinner time. So forgive me. Um, so old Brooklyn, you can buy a house. You can still buy a house really inexpensively. But also I showed a house over the weekend. It was $185,000. Like the agent just called me today. She can't sell it. And I said, well, I think the price needs to come down. And she said, yeah, but the house next to it sold in the 200s. I'm like, yeah, well, good. It was a beautiful house, but it has a garage. The house we looked at didn't have a garage, but beautiful. I mean, pretty much there was a fire in it down to the studs. You can find beautiful houses. There's lots of shopping. Um, they do a farmer's market. They do movies on the square in the, in the summertime. Um, but old Brooklyn is also home to three and some people would say four separate actual neighborhoods. And one of them is the Stockyards area. Um, and what can I say about Stockyards? Um, well, you have, there's a shopping center called Stockyard Commons. 
And that's after you go down the hill. I, we would pass it to go to my grandma's house. And you have a Target there. You have your grocery store. Um, all kinds of shopping there. I think there's a Home Depot. Whatever. So you have the stockyards. You have Brooklyn Center. And then you have Old Brooklyn. And then part of Old Brooklyn. And when I went around and filmed Old Brooklyn this past weekend. It's this beautiful neighborhood. And, it, and the houses remind me of the houses in Camp's Corners. These beautiful brick homes. It's called South Hills and it's just a couple of blocks and they're beautiful brick homes. You'll see people walking around. It was not a very nice day on Saturday when we were out there, but people were out walking their dogs. Um, beautiful, beautiful homes. And there's actually a winery in Old Brooklyn. I can't remember what it's called. I wish I would have written it down. Uh, right in the middle of this neighborhood, this cute little winery. You can sit outside in the summertime. Obviously, it's January. It was closed. Uh, so Old Brooklyn, another great sort of west side. And Old Brooklyn is like, it's just south of Tremont. So it's like minutes from downtown Cleveland. You're actually closer to downtown Cleveland than you are if you're in West Park. So like the West Park area, Cam's Corners is like West 150th. So if you remember my video from last week, uh, West 150th would be 150 blocks from the center of downtown Cleveland, which is Ontario. So it's 150 blocks west from Ontario. Uh, so there's that. So um, well, Brooklyn, you're gonna get more like the Tremont areas, like West 9th, West 6th, West whatever. And I apologize, my dog's barking. Okay, we'll keep on heading east. So everybody's heard about Ohio City. So I'm not gonna talk much about Ohio City. I've done several videos on Ohio City. This is the place to be. Um, my dream is to live right across the street at the Freeze and Shuley building. And it has the most beautiful buildings right across the street from the West Side Market. Great Lake Brewery, Great, Great Lakes Brewing Company is there. The West Side Market, um, Town Hall, Market Garden, you name it. The bars and restaurants and the shopping, it's all right there. Now, Ohio City has another little neighborhood just to differentiate yourself. It's called Hinchtown, and I've mentioned this before. And that's like the, it's just west of Ohio City, and it's like West 29th Street. Like my favorite pizza, our favorite pizza spot, in addition to Il Rion on West 65th, is Saucy Brew Works. And it's a brewery and a pizza place. And my favorite pizza is the Bee's Knees. They put hot honey on it. And that is in Hinchtown. And there's a couple little shops there. There's a delicatessen, larder. There's a gym. There's a tea spot. So that is actually considered Hinchtown, but it's really part of Ohio City. Okay, moving on. Moving on, we have Tremont. I've done videos on Tremont. Another hot, hot, hot spot. You go down to Professor Avenue, any of those little spots down there. You have a barrio, which is this really trendy Mexican place. Amazing tacos. You check off what you want. The most amazing guacamole, amazing margaritas. Love it. There's barrios all over the place now. But the original is right there in Tremont. Um, cool houses. Everything's been redone. There's all kinds of art galleries. They do art walks. They're doing one. I think they did one last weekend. Um, so even in the wintertime, there's things going on. You can walk around, little shops, art galleries, amazing restaurants, Lucky's Cafe. Oh my gosh, they make this macaroni and cheese that's so good. You like you dip your fork in their applesauce and then you take a piece of their macaroni and cheese because it's got like three cheeses like Gouda. I don't even know what you put in your mouth and it just, oh my God, it melts in your mouth. So good. So many amazing restaurants. They've been on almost every food channel you've seen. You've probably seen them before between Ohio City and Tremont. I mean, that's where all the famous restaurants are pretty much located. Now, Tremont also has a separate little neighborhood called Duck Island. And they say it's a true island, but I don't think it's covered by water. It's surrounded by a ravine. It's not really surrounded by water. But in Duck Island, like that's where you have the most expensive townhouses there are. They're like 700 to a million, million bucks. But you go up on those rooftops, the most amazing views. I mean, give me a break. When I worked for Howard Hanna, um, Carolyn in our office, that's her specialty. She lives there and pretty much any listing in that Duck Island area, it's probably her listing. And yeah, I'm kind of jealous because she's killing it. Um, but she lives there and 
good for her, but beautiful, beautiful townhomes. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay. Okay. So now we're heading east. We've skipped over downtown. That's pretty much all the neighborhoods on the west side. Now let's go to St. Clair Superior and the Midtown area. So now we're talking like East 55th Street. So um, downtown, it pretty much ends like where Cleveland State is, like East 25th, East 26th, and Euclid or St. Clair or Superior. Those are the three main like parallel roads in Lakeside that are downtown. So I would say about East 20th, pretty much downtown ends, and then you get into another area. Uh, I used to own a tutoring company and our office was on East 23rd and Superior, 2310 Superior. And I don't know if I'd call it downtown. It really was not downtown. We had a parking lot behind us. It was its own neighborhood. People lived there. There was a church. It really is part of the St. Clair Superior Midtown neighborhood. And it was right around the corner from Asian Town. So the most amazing Asian restaurants they have um, their Asian cultural, their fair, which they, it's a lot of stuff going on. Very, very active um, community. Lots of things going on. I, I highly recommend you, if you're interested in, in it, in this area, it's actually the St. Clair Superior neighborhood is one of Cleveland's most racially and ethnically diverse lakefront communities. You want Thai food, uh, Thai food, I'm trying to think what else they have. You name it, they have it there. So very cool area, um, right east of downtown, practically downtown. You probably have a lot of college kids because Cleveland State is right there. It's not far from Case. So there's that area. Um, now Midtown, it was sort of just a little bit east of that. You have the Agora Theater, which is actually very well known in, in, across the country. Um, it's like a premier live music venue. People come in from all over the country for, for the music that comes in. They're doing this weekend. I don't know. My husband might want to, um, go to it. It's like jazz is not dead or something like that. Jazz, but it, they're like a Grateful Dead band, but they play jazz music to it. So it sounds pretty interesting. Um, so you have the Agora Theater. You also have what's called the Dunham Tavern. And I've been to this. It's a museum now. It is the oldest building to remain in the spot where it was built. Um, and when I was a teacher on the east side, we did a field trip here and it was so cool. Like it's exactly where it was in the, in the early 1800s. So cool. And you can go in there, you can see, you can see where the garden is and, and they'll explain to you like, yep, people would stay up there upstairs and sleep if they were traveling. Then they'd go downstairs, they'd eat, get something to drink. So cool. So that is Midtown. Now let's move on. Okay. Let's talk about St. Clair Superior Midtown and these other neighborhoods that I'm going to be talking about almost for the next few neighborhoods. There are nine neighborhoods and it's called the Great, the Circle, mm, I can't remember, um, but it's this, there's nine neighborhoods in Cleveland and they're eligible for these housing assistance. So, um, and with this, with this program, you can get up to $30,000 in forgivable loans to buy a home because they really want you to purchase homes and, and home ownership. There's a lot of blight in these neighborhoods. There's a lot of boarded up housing, you know, and sometimes they just tear the houses down. So they really, really are, are um, dedicated to, for home ownership. Um, or they'll give you up to $1,400 to go towards one month's rent, or they will loan you up to 8,000, they won't even loan it to you. You, you don't have to pay it back. $8,000 for you to repair your home. And I've known people that have taken advantage of that. So that's good to know. Okay, now let's move on. Clark Fulton, which is actually still close to downtown. I can, this is still a west side. I should have, I guess I messed up. I'm sorry. We're going back west, the Clark Fulton area. Metro Hospital is on West 25th Street. So this is just south of Ohio City. Clark Fulton, it is the new up and coming neighborhood um still it's the um it's actually the densest hispanic and latino population in all of ohio so you're going to have a lot of hispanic and latino restaurants um so if, you know if you like that that's a, the, the place to go amazing hispanic food um what else you're going to have, okay, so Metro Hospital, they're expanding. Like, we're almost going to build a brand new hospital. So they're really also 
motivated to get people living around them. And they have their own programs where, and I apologize for my dog. <sighs> my husband's home and she's barking because she's excited. Uh, Metro will also have a bunch of, like, if you are working for the hospital in any capacity, they also have programs to help, to help purchase homes because they really want, that's their community and they want to make it beautiful. So they they will help people buy homes to stay in the community and to be close to the hospital. Also a very good area if you're looking to invest. Um, you can buy homes very inexpensively. I work with an investor who pretty much just in that area, in the Denison area, uh, but he really goes in and he fixes them up. So um, that's one thing, you know, most people who call, any investor that calls me, you know, they, they all know they do their homework and, hey, Cleveland's the best area to invest in. And, well, you know, as a Clevelander, I'm like, okay, that's great if you're going to fix it up. So it's one thing to just buy something, do nothing to it, and just rent it out. And these poor people are living in squalor. Um, so, but Clark Fulton is definitely up and coming. Um, new businesses are popping up. It's in a great location, You're close to the highway, close to downtown, close to Metro if you're working there. Um, and this also is considered three neighborhoods too. And here I am talking about Stockyard again, but I already mentioned Stockyards, but this says it's part of Clark Fulton. So I don't know. Somebody I'm sure will correct me, but we have also the Clark Fulton and then Brooklyn Center, which is a kind of Denison Pearl Road area and Archwood Avenue, which I think it's all part of Clark Fulton, but I guess Denison School's there too. My cousin teaches there, but Archwood is this beautiful street. You're like in this Clark Fulton neighborhood and you go down Archwood and these houses are gorgeous. They're like Victorians. They're absolutely stunning. I've been in a couple of them and they have this like street sale and it's just like amazing from what I've, I've never been to it. I want to go. You know, a lot of artists live on that street and they sell their stuff and it just sounds really, really cool. So Archwood Avenue is in that area. Beautiful homes. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay, back to the east side. The Broadway Slavic Village neighborhood. This is 10 minutes southeast of downtown Cleveland. Slavic Village um, is, it's a very ethnic neighborhood. You're gonna see the little flags everywhere and it's home to, it's actually going through. It's been trying, there's new construction out there. There's some, it's easy access, Fleet Highway, you're right off 77, so you're easy downtown, easy south, easy to independence. Uh, it's still part of the towpath, so if you, metro parks are in abundance out there. There's even a Cleveland Metro Parks golf course out there. So, you know, and they're really trying to uh, renovate and um, just do good things out there. And there's actually a woman-owned butcher um, out there called Saucison, and I had a meeting out there once when we got to try their different their different meats and really really cool building, just really really neat. So that's the Broadway Slavic Village neighborhood. That's I think I mentioned it was Fleet Avenue, Broadway Avenue. Um, there's some Cleveland schools out there that I've had friends teach out of. That's where my dad pretty much grew up, out that way. Um, you know. Old neighborhoods. That's what Cleveland is. It's a lot of old neighborhoods. All right, let's move on. Collinwood, another thriving community. And Collinwood is home to the Beachland Ballroom, which I just went to for the first time, like maybe five years ago, another dead cover band. My husband loves the Grateful Dead, um, which was so cool. And just on that whole street, there's art galleries, there's cool old bars and I was like blown away. Yeah, Collinwood, another funky little area. Like everybody's like artsy and, you know, there's little houses, you know, have funky little things in their front yards or their, their own gallery. Just a really cool area. So another thriving neighborhood. Um, let's see, what did I write? Oh, Collinwood, um, let's see. There's art galleries that says Lakefront South, so down by the lake to the East Cleveland. So it goes all the way around there. And then from Eddy Road, which if you go north, that's Bratinall, which I've done a video on Bratinall, rich, um, down to the border of uh, Euclid and East 150th. So, and that also encompasses three other different neighborhoods according to the whole Cleveland plan, the North Shore, Collingwood area, Collingwood, Nottingham, and the Euclid Green neighborhoods, and maybe one other one, I'm not sure. But all that 
is considered Collinwood. All right, moving on. We have the Fairfax neighborhood. Uh, this is where the Cleveland Clinic is located. So they also are very invested in that area. And if you go through by the Cleveland Clinic, tons of new construction. Um, and it's right on like the Carnegie area, east side of Cleveland, but not quite towards your University Circle area. Um, so just east of Cleveland, you got the RTA that runs through there. You got beautiful townhomes, lots of areas over there. You're, just, you're close to downtown. You're close to University Circle, Cleveland Heights. University Heights, Shaker Heights. Um, it's also home to the Karamu House, which is the country's oldest African-American theater that is still in existence. And it's so cool. Uh, when I was a Cleveland teacher, I also did a field trip here too. And it was one of the coolest things. Other than, That and Dunham Tavern are like two of my favorite field trips that I did as a Cleveland teacher. It was so cool. The kids, we did a dancing thing. Oh my God. The kids were so into it. I remember we did the dance for like a whole week because they we they taught us this dance and every day like, can we do that dance again? So that was my little reward when they were well behaved. So cool. The Caramel House. Highly recommend you check it out. Okay, moving on. Okay, moving on. We're moving on to the Glenville area. Glenville, you might have heard of the football team, um, Ted, oh gosh, so Ted Ginn, famous, you know, the Glenville football team, Ted Ginn's famous, he's had a lot of players play for Ohio State and then go on to play in the NFL, so Glenville's also the birthplace of Superman, the creators Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster were born there, so if you like Superman, it was born in Cleveland, not sure if you knew that. It's also home to the MLK Road, the Cultural Gardens, which is kind of cool. So if you go up, if you take in, you get off, you know, the, the shoreway, like 90, get off at MLK, heading towards University Circle, you have these cultural gardens and every country has their own garden and it's, they're beautiful, absolutely beautiful, um, especially in the summertime when everything's in bloom. Okay, so that is the Glenville area. Now we're going to move into Huff. Huff also very historic and this is between the midtown and university circle area so i didn't know this there's a winery in the huff area it's called the chateau huff winery so cool it's also home to league park which was built in 1891 and it's the first home of cleveland baseball and so they do a lot of events there it's still there They're, they still have games that go on there um pretty cool they yeah i think you can tour it pretty cool so huff it's a big neighborhood. Um, um, I don't know what else to say about that. And then let's go on to the Lee Harvard area. Lee Harvard is home to the Jack. There's Jack Casino, which is right downtown Cleveland. Um, but they have the Jack it's called Thistledown the Racino. So you have thoroughbred, thoroughbred racing there. <clears throat> Very popular. Oh, there's also a famous soul food restaurant called Angie's Soul Cafe. Cafe. So that's the Lee Road, Harvard Road neighborhood. Um, very vibrant. And like I said before, each one of these separate neighborhoods has their own community development corporation, and they're very active in the neighborhood. I'm a, I, I'm doing my research. I have like five pages of stuff. I like went on every single one of their CDC websites. I mean, the events they all have, the board of directors and the meetings, they're so involved in their cities. It's so impressive. Really, really, really impressive. Okay, moving on. Okay, now we got the Kinsman area. Another very vibrant neighborhood, very involved. Um, and the one thing, so this is more, these are more residential areas. So there's not really much to say about these neighborhoods. They're, they're really mainly residential, except for one or two things that they're known for. And Kinsman, a very, but also it's a very residential area. They have this thing, it's called Box Spot. And it's this retail and small business, they call it an incubator. It's made from recycled shipping containers. It's really cool to see. I'm gonna try and get some pictures of it to put up. So that's one, one attraction there. And it's pretty cool. Like it's right in the middle of like this neighborhood and it's like, boom, here it is. You can tell they're shipping containers, pretty wild. Okay, moving on, I got two more. And these you've probably heard of because I've done Several videos on these. Uh, probably one of my favorite neighborhoods, Little Italy, um, right next to University Circle. 
Uh, in fact, they don't even have University Circle as a neighborhood, which is kind of crazy because I consider that its own neighborhood. That's where Case Western Reserve is. That's where all your um, all your museums are, the art museum, the orchestra's there, Natural History Museum, the Children's Museum, University Hospitals are there. Um, I consider Little Italy its own neighborhood because it's a, it is its own neighborhood. They have the Italian flag everywhere. You have Murray Hill, Mayfield Road, um, all kinds of art galleries again. The food, oh my gosh, we were just there a couple weeks ago in, oh, mm, my inspector, we were doing an inspector, an, ex, an inspection in a house in Shaker Heights, and um, my go-to inspector, his wife is a fellow Cleveland teacher of mine, we, well, I used to be a Cleveland teacher, in fact, I convinced her to quit whatever job she had to come teach with me, I wanted her to be my substitute while I was having a kid, and then my school will be right they hired her full-time and I was without a sub but whatever we all went to dinner to after the inspection to Little Italy my favorite Trattoria and there's Presties we did not get dessert because normally we'll go get like a cannoli afterwards oh my gosh uh but every summer in August they have because there's a church right there a Catholic church and they have the Feast of the Assumption they they close down the streets you get your cavatels and your meatballs and oh my lord amazing um, University Circle, I'm going to touch on that because you got to go. And hey, if you're in University Circle, and I say this all the time, if you're going to those museums, you know, spend the day out there, go to all the museums, and then you have to go. How can you not go to Little Italy and eat? In fact, it's rare. If I want Italian food, we'll just go down there. And I live way on the west side. I live as far west in Lorraine County as you can get. And I can be in Little Italy in 40 minutes. So we have no problem going out there. If we want Italian food, we're not messing around. Okay, and the last neighborhood I wanna talk about, and I just did a video on Shaker Heights, but right before you get to Shaker Heights, the suburb is Shaker Square. And it is absolutely, it is actually the oldest shopping district in Ohio, in the entire state. And it's known for its restaurant, Edwin's, and then it's got Edwin's too. And I think one of them, they hire, um, uh, released prisoners and they have this whole program for them and they're they work the restaurant I've never eaten there but I've always wanted to so Shaker Square is really cool it's like right when you come into and then you go into um, Shaker Shaker Heights but it's got a movie theater it's got and then you go to Larch Larchmere and that's where you have all kinds of antiques and you have little art stores so Shaker Square has got little also has do they have a yours truly there which is like one of my favorite east side restaurants um, yeah, little little stores. I know, and I'm like, God, they have a Verizon there. Why do they have to ruin a little cute little cute little square with a Verizon? Get that Verizon out of there. Put a little mom and pop shop in there. But still, worth checking out, especially if you're heading out towards Shakers. You know, it's all right there. Little Italy University Circle, Shaker Square. You're like minutes away from each other. So that being said, those are my main the main 17 neighborhoods in Cleveland. Um, and then I'm going to break it down. I haven't done a Cam's Corners video in years, so I'm going to be doing that. Uh, obviously, I just told you I was in Old Brooklyn last weekend. That's probably going to be my next video to revisit Old Brooklyn. And I'm just going to sort of break down these neighborhoods going forward. So I hope you enjoy this little explanation of the Cleveland city proper. Um, and as always, if you're looking to move to the Cleveland area, give me a call. This is my job. I am a real estate agent. Um, I love my city. I know my city. I know the east side. I know the west side. I know the south side. And I know Cleveland proper. So give me a call. Send me a text. This is what I do. I love it. I love helping people move to the city. I love just hearing how excited people are that they're moving to Cleveland and can't wait. And sometimes I'm like, really? But then I'm like, yeah, you know what? It is a pretty great city. I love it. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.